<laughs> uh, look, I, I, I worried um, when, when Trump won that the sort of response, you know, that, that the despair that a lot of people felt um, could sort of harden into cynicism. And I think a lot, because I even remember back when, you know, Obama was running in 2008, he would always talk about sort of our, our fiercest opponent isn't the other party, it's cynicism. It's this belief that the game is rigged and there's no use to participate. And I think that the most important thing that we can, and you talk about this in the book, you talk about sort of the difference between faith and hope and how hope is sort of the belief that a better world can be possible. And a lot of people, you know, today, and it's easy to think of hope as naive or hope as ignorant. And to, to hold on to the idea that, as, as you say, like dreaming of a world that hasn't happened yet, um, it's actually, this is really the, the purest essence of hope, right? And this entire country, like we've, we've never had a moment in this country where we have reached the ideals that were set forth in the founding documents. And that's not something to, to despair, to be cynical about, that's actually something to be hopeful about. But because what we're trying to do, what was laid out in those founding documents, is incredibly hard work. And no one in the history of this country has done it yet. And the fact that it is possible, that we know that it's possible because we have seen these small and large steps towards those goals throughout this country's history, even in the midst of all the awful things that have happened, that should sort of drive us forward, even when we face losses, even when we face defeat. Like, I hope we win these midterm elections, but even if we don't, we are, it is going to require us to wake up the very next day and keep up the same level of work that we've been doing ever since Trump became president and before that, too. And so having patience to believe that change is possible, even if we have to face a lot of defeats, um, is something that I hope people take away. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I worried a lot about when Trump won um, was that there are a lot of people who think the history of injustice in this country began with the Muslim ban. You know, like the country's banned long before the Muslim ban, right? right. The Muslim ban is bad. The country was also bad for a lot of people. And like, will this energy sustain when the threat doesn't look this way anymore? That the threat right now is like very intense. It is like distributed widely. And when it doesn't look this way, like will we have that same energy? And like, when I think about one of the things that take away is like reminding yourself that we gotta keep this energy even when the threat doesn't look like this. And when you aren't like directly implicated, will you still fight? And a lot of people who like, they talk about their political awakening in this moment and it's beautiful and they get it. They are woke because they were at risk, right? And like, will you fight when it's not just you at risk? Like when, when John talks about solidarity, part of that is understanding that like, when other people are at risk, like you are next, like you're gonna be coming soon. And like, I think that has to be part of it. You know, people ask like, why do we focus so much on black people? And it's like, the reality is the disparities are just so great that if we fix it for black people, we fix it for everybody else automatically. Right, right, right. So, right. <laughs> You know, I want people to like remember that, that that is like a real, that's like real. And like, will you focus on the threat when like it doesn't, uh, when it doesn't look like this? The second piece is like this reminder that like we are not only our trauma, like we're not only our pain, but we are joy too. Yeah. And that so often like we get bogged down in like the battle and the da, da, da. And in the book I talk about the Cleo Wade, who's a, a great friend. She has this quote that says like, not every ground is a battleground. I love that, that like, so often, especially in, in movement stuff, is that you get so used to fighting that the only way you know how to build relationships and move in the world is through battle. That is like the way you sort of move and maneuver. And like that just can't be the only way that we move and maneuver. That like we have to like understand that the battle is a part of it. But like some of the ground is ground that we stand on and celebrate. And that like that has to be like real. And the third is that like we have to make sure that we all, that we build like the biggest choir. but. In the sense of like all the bad people know each other. All those people that we don't like on the right, they are all friends. They grew up together. They like went through the same training programs. Like they are not strangers to each other. Part of our work on the left is to make sure that all the good people know each other too. But like that has to be when I think about some of the like quiet work that we're doing with like in these rooms, it's like I'm just connecting people. I'm like, do 
you know that person, you should know that person, hoping that like you can help other people create these entrances. And like even tonight, I like hope that like when you get up from here that like you meet somebody you didn't know. I'm hoping that like in all the, the pod tours that we go on, that like people meet new people and like build new communities, that like the good people have to know each other, that the only way that we'll build the biggest choir is if we all see that that is our work. It can't just be one of us, it can't just be two of us or three of us, that has to be everybody's work. Appreciate you coming today. Thank you all for reading the book, and uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah.